Hi, I'm Robert Reeves, CTO of Liquibase. Over the past 20 years, we've seen amazing advancements in how we develop and deliver software. Moreover, the choices we have of databases have never been greater. Developers today can choose the database that best suits their application. Despite the number of database choices, our development workflow has left the database behind. Simply put, Liquibase data is version control and collaboration for your database. Today, I'll show you how to quickly provision a developer instance of MongoDB, make changes to MongoDB, and then commit the change. I will then show you how to roll back and forward your changes. Let's get started. Now, the first step to using Liquibase data after installing Liquibase is to set up a Liquibase.properties file that is going to targo, target MongoDB. Um, and that's what I have right here in VS Code. Um, you'll see that we've got our uh, URL, MongoDB URL, username and password. And uh, for Liquibase veterans, you're going to recognize changelog.xml. I'm using XML here, but Liquibase can support JSON, YAML, formatted SQL. Uh, probably in this case, you'd want to stick with the first three. Um, and the one thing that you might not recognize for Liquibase vets is the repository. This is a convenience function, which allows me to not type the name of my repository every time I do a Liquibase data command. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to use my repo here. And so I guess we should go ahead and get started with Liquibase data. I'm going to go back to my command prompt. And I am going to issue a Liquibase data run command. Uh, the last time that I will call out the repository name. But if you'll notice, this is very similar to the environment variables you have to declare when you start MongoDB. That's because that's what we're doing. Um, we are going to utilize the official image of Mongo that is in Docker Hub. And two things are happening here. One is I'm starting MongoDB in a Docker container. Great. But the second thing that's happening is that I'm registering the volumes where the data is stored with MongoDB with Liquibase data. That's actually what gets versioned. Uh, not the container itself, but the underlying data. Um, so now that we have this um, up and running, I can do Liquibase data ls, and it's going to show me the repositories that I have registered with Liquibase data locally. Uh, and here is my repo. Great. Um, so let's go ahead and take a peek at this. Um, if I go back over here to Compass, I can go ahead and connect to this MongoDB instance that I just started. And you'll notice that it just has the base um, information here. Uh, I have not put anything into this container uh, to be versioned. So this might be a good time for me to do my first commit. So let's go ahead and copy this command from over here. Go back to the command prompt. And I will do liquibase data commit in my message. First commit. Uh, let's go ahead and hit enter. Um, and this is going to start the process and, well, complete it <laughs> of creating my first uh, commit. Um, if I do liquibase data log, it will then uh, show me uh, the number of commits that are for this repository. There should be only one. There it is. Um, so I guess I should probably change this database. I should probably do something to it. Let's, let's put some data into it. Um, now, the best tool that I know of, of making changes to a database is Liquibase. And so I'm going to use Liquibase update against this MongoDB instance. Um, using this change log. And this is a sample change log that we have. Uh, if you certainly go to, uh, if you go to uh, GitHub, Liquibase, um, you, you'll see this example there in a uh, repository. But this is just creating, um, you know, looks like we're creating a collection here, whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of different things that we can change on MongoDB uh, with Liquibase. Um, so, now that I have this change log, I'm just going to go ahead and run Liquibase update. And there we go. 
Uh, now that I made my changes, let's go and see what those changes are. So we'll go back to Compass, we'll hit Refresh, and oh look, there's Liquibase. And here are all the things that I've added to, uh, uh, to Mongo. Uh, if we look at this file, uh, for folks that are familiar with Liquibase, you'll know that we create a database change log table uh, to keep track of changes. Well, Mongo's a little different, and so this is how we're doing it. We're keeping track of every single change, just like we do with relational databases, but here we're doing it for a NoSQL database. And so this is uh, keeping track of all of those changes, and this corresponds with, with what is in the changelog.xml. Uh, so now that we've made a change, this might be a good time to then do a commit. And just like before, we'll do liquid-based data commit, and we'll pass in a message. And there we go. So if we do um, liquid-based data log, we'll see that we have two commits here. Now this is where the fun begins. Now I can roll back those changes. So let's say, oops, I didn't mean to make that last liquid base update. I uh, zigged where I should have zagged. Well, no problem. Um, what I'm going to do is roll back to this commit here and we are going to do liquid base data check out. Whoops. Liquid base data check out commit. There we go. So now if I go back to Compass and I hit refresh, we'll see that liquid base is gone. It is just like it was for the first commit. Well, guess what? I've changed my mind once again. So let's go ahead and we'll do liquid base data log so I can get that commit ID for my most recent commit. And we'll do liquid base data checkout commit equals, here it is. And once I go back to Compass, I should see Liquibase once again. Now, of course, I'm showing how to do this locally, but Liquibase data certainly supports the ability to have remotes so that you can share your Mongo de MongoDB data changes amongst team members. So if one team member makes a change and they do liquid base data commit, liquid base data push to that remote, another team member can either do liquid base data clone or liquid base data pool and see those changes on their local machine. And that's pretty cool. Thank you.